Hi! If you're a regular viewer of this channel, you may have seen some of my previous videos about my new stringing machine. However, I'll share more things that I learned about this machine. Oh, and if you're a first time viewer and happen to stumble on this video, I hope you check out my full review of the Babolat Evolution Tour stringing machine. All right, let's get into it. In case you're wondering why there's a video of me stringing a racket there in the corner, a viewer requested that I show a video of me stringing a racket on this machine. So anyway, Randy, this one's for you. All right, so I wanted to show you the three parts of this machine and the assembly. And it's really simple because there's three parts. Basically, there's the, the base, the stand, and the machine itself. So when you assemble the, the stand onto the base, this is a cover here, and the base is under here. There's four screws on each corner of the stand that attaches it to the base. And then once you get that secured, then there's four screws under here that attach the machine onto the stand. Now this stand is the, uh, since I have the Evolution Tour, is electronic and that's what's different about this machine compared to the Evolution. So the weight of this is actually uh, about 15 pounds heavier than the uh, manual stand. And the overall, uh, overall weight of this machine is about 123 and the Evolution is 103. Now, if we take a look at this, uh, the machine itself, and what I really like about it is that uh, because this, uh, this uh, machine can work independently of the stand, you can actually take it off if I wanted to and put it on a table and string uh, as a tabletop machine. And uh, there was a time that I strung at a professional tournament that I wanted to string uh, overnight at another site and instead of taking the stand and the base I would just take the machine back to the condo where I was staying and was stringing there overnight and then brought it back to the tournament site so uh, I thought that would be a nice feature to have is something that would be uh, portable in a sense that it can work independently from the stand. All right so I did want to point out some of the differences between the Evolution and the Evolution Tour besides its price tag. The Evolution comes in at 6500 and the Evolution Tour at 8000 And at first I thought that I would get the Evolution but uh, here are some things that are different uh, besides the electronic stand which I felt I could live without. I didn't need to have uh, an electronic stand but um, it has, this Evolution Tour has a digital string measure. So if I insert the string here, you'll see that uh, this uh, measurement of string, once this string pops out of this other hole here, it'll start to record how much feet uh, you're pulling through there. So that could be handy if you're measuring string off of a reel. But I actually don't use this. I, I have my own uh, technique for measuring string. So. Um, I didn't feel like I really needed that. Uh, the second thing about this machine is that it has uh, profiles for different stringers. So uh, if you had other stringers stringing in your shop, you can actually uh, set up profiles for that uh, particular stringer, but uh, I'm the only one stringing, so I didn't need that either. So uh, there is one feature that I did um, want from this machine was the electronic break so you can set it so that it automatically breaks uh, the turntable on each pull and that's really helpful when you're doing the Prince 03 port rackets so I'll do a demonstration here so I'm gonna pull tension here and basically basically it locked the turntable so uh, that was one feature that I definitely wanted on the machine and I'll talk more about this color screen because there's some cool features on that also. All right, so let's take a look at this cool turntable. When you first see this machine, you can't help not to notice the circular string clamp track. And that allows the clamps to just glide a full 360 degrees. And when I say glide, they're just literally gliding. There's no friction at all. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if more machines in the future are designed like this because uh, it's very useful. In fact, I 
incorporated three stringing tips where I eliminated the use of a starting clamp by having the ability to move these clamps mainly so that they can be on the same side of the racket at um, certain times of the stringing process. But uh, the other things about the turntable, uh, the mounting tires are fixed. They're pretty spaced far apart. If I mount a 120 head size racket on this machine, uh, there is still a little bit of space on the, uh, on the top and bottom. Well, there's a about a half an inch space if I were to look at that. So I haven't strung a weed racket yet, but it'll be interesting to see how that would take. And I'm assuming it'll fit. The other thing about the, uh, the arms, support arms, they're very thin and profile looking. And so is the knobs, the adjustment knobs for the uh, arms and the billiards. Uh, it's nice and um, it's tapered. So less chances of the string getting caught on it. Now you see this blue band here? Yeah, that's a rubber band that I added. So what I did notice is that um, uh, at times it would help if there was a little bit more grip so I added that rubber band and uh, it would have been nice if the uh, Babolat could incorporate in the future maybe uh, a rubber piece in within the, uh, the two knobs, the billiards and the support arm. So that's something for the future. But um, again, it's a cool uh, 360 degree turntable and um, yeah, I'll share some tips with you. If you check out my episode 5 video of the Babolat Evolution Tour observations video, I do have the three tips that I did learn while using this machine. And basically it's uh, centered around not having to use a starting clamp. So on the one of the tips is actually the racket that I'm stringing above, but uh, it's when you're stringing a natural one piece racket. So typically what I like to do is when I get to the last main on the long side, I would use a starting clamp on the outside so that I can actually finish two of the top crosses. But with these clamps, I can actually use the stringing clamp, clamp down on the string, and then when I need to clamp onto the string at the top, I can move it back and forth as needed. Whereas before, I, I needed to use a starting clamp in order to free up uh, this clamp to clamp on this side. So make sure to check that out. The second one is when I use the uh, round the world uh, stringing pattern. And at some point, I do have to clamp on a string on the outside of the frame, again, to free up a, a clamp so that I can get to the same side of the racket. So that's another one. And the third one is when I start my crosses, I um, no longer have to use a starting clamp on the outside. Oh, you can't see that on the outside there. Instead, what I do is I actually use the string clamp to hold it in place. And then while I'm uh, tensioning strings, I actually can go I can go back and forth depending on uh, the string that I'm clamping. And then once my clamp is free to uh, move, then I can retension the string and tie off the knot. All right, so let's take a look at the string clamps next. And when I was first stringing on this machine, I was noticing that after you clamp off and then release tension, uh, there was a kind of noticeable drawback. Uh, it wasn't too bad there maybe two to two and a half millimeters. Um, but then on the next pull, it would recover it. I mean, the clamp will come back flush uh, to the grommet if that's where you started the clamp uh, prior to that. So um, anyway, I reached out to Babolat because I was concerned about that. And I got a chance to speak to John Lyons. He's the product manager for professional devices based out of the US. And uh, he said that it would be somewhat more noticeable on this machine because of the fact that the, uh, the clamp, the way it's designed, it's, it's pretty tall, uh, probably taller than most uh, machines. Uh, I measured the base to the bottom edge of the frame and it's seven and a quarter inches. Um, I'm not sure what the other machines are measured at, but again, this is uh, probably taller on the tall side. So when you have a clamp that is reaching up that high, it will tend to angle out more and it'll be a little bit more noticeable uh, in terms of the drawback. But the good thing is that on the next pull, it does recover it. So um, that was reassuring. Uh, we did have a chance to talk more about some of the other things about this clamp, which I'll share with you. So in my conversation with John, I didn't 
learn more about these clamps and I found out that they're made out of tungsten carbide and I wasn't sure what that meant but I, I knew it was going to be something good and when I looked it up it's the most durable metal known to man that uh, will not bend so that was impressive uh, the teeth is not diamond dust coated it it is textured but it it was uh made when this uh, it's made into the clamp so it's part of the mold I guess when they uh, made this clamp the other thing about this clamp it, it is uh, self-adjusting and that was in the manual but I didn't really understand what that meant so he helped explain what that is so in John's explanation of the self-adjusting feature of this clamp he went into great detail and I thought it was very interesting so I'm gonna actually use his notes to explain this so he started to say that when the clamp lever starts to close, the clamp begins to put a certain amount of pressure on the string or force. And there's a system within the clamp that stops the clamp from applying pressure once the force reaches a specific level. So on a thin string, the clamp has to close more before reaching that pressure setting. While on a thick string, the clamp closes less. It reaches the pressure target, then stops closing, and even if the lever is still uh, moving down to the lock position, it's sort of like a tiny clutch. So this version, um, this clamp in the racket station, uh, it looks like this, but it only had a factory set pressure target. So on these clamps that's on the Evolution and the Evolution Tour, you'll notice that there's a dial and that allows the user to slightly reset the amount of pressure the clamp puts on the string. So right now it's set at the, the minus side, so they'll put less pressure. And if I turn it over to the uh, plus, this will put more pressure. Now, since the user's hand can also feel how much pressure he's putting on the lever, It'll feel like you need to push with more or less force, but the clamp will still stop closing when it reaches the modified amount of pressure you want on the string. So if you want to set it for a little bit less pressure, which I have it here, uh, the clamp will put the same with a little bit less pressure on every different string. So the short answer to the, this clamp it's not really sensing the string, but it's sensing the amount of pressure or force being put on the string and stops closing once a certain amount of force or pressure is applied. So hopefully you followed me on all of that. And I really appreciate John explaining that in that much detail. A couple of things I noticed about these string clamps is that, and it could be a con in this case, is that because it's gravity release, uh, when you release the clamp, it doesn't just drop down like some machines. You actually have to push it down. Uh, in some cases, um, let's see what happens on this next strings, but it, it is a little bit sticky at times. I mean, I cleaned the clamps, so I know it's not that, but uh, sometimes I actually have to release the clamp by releasing the base. But uh, let's see what happens on this next string. Okay, that went down really easily. I'll do another one and see. But... Uh, if I struggle to get that clamp to uh, pop the base, then what I'll have to do is open the open up the base first. And some stringers actually prefer to do that on all of their strings. I do that for the mains, but on the crosses, uh, I like to release the string clamp at the top first. So, okay, that went down easily. I have a picture of what that uh, release, um, that handle looks like. And there's a very small gap uh, that you can fit your fingers through, your fingernails. Uh, so I wish it was a little bit wider so you could put your fingers in easier. So uh, there are times though when, it, when I was trying to drop the clamp that it didn't go down as easy and uh, I couldn't push it down. So what ha would have to happen is, um, I'll go ahead and do it on this one. I'm gonna release the base first and then uh, do the string clamp. All right, so let's say it was stuck, then I would have to literally release the base first and then take off the clamp to, to get to the next string. All right, next, let's take a look at the tool tray. 
I feel it's a little bit of a con because it is on the small side, but you know, based on everything else that's on this machine, I guess that's all the space uh, that was left for the tool tray. Um, I managed to find a space for my five tools and I like the fact that they're not piled on top of each other because I wouldn't want to dig for a tool when I'm uh, looking for it. So I have each of the tools, each of the tools has a place. I think maybe an improvement on this tool tray though is, um, you know, the screen is slanted, so it's very ergonomic there. Uh, this whole surface is actually angled, but maybe if the bottom of this tool tray, right now it's a flat surface, if it was slightly angled along with the edge of this, then each of these tools would be facing you and uh, be a little bit more ergonomic. But, you know, that's just me being picky. All right, so here we have the tension head, uh, but in Babolat's language, they call it the traction head. And you notice that there's no Diablo present. On some of the previous models, like the Star 4 and 5, uh, the Diablo was right in front of the, uh, the tension head. So uh, when talking to John, it was interesting uh, that they felt like um, this machine doesn't need the Diablo because what it does instead is that the jaw grippers within the tension, or sorry, the traction head, it slides forward, it grabs the string, and then tensions the string. So in the past with the Diablo, the Diablo basically uh, gave the string um, or uh, secured the string before entering the jaw grippers, which in, as a result put less stress on the string. So instead of having the Diablo in this machine, it's going to go into the jaw grippers there, and then you're going to notice that it's going to slide forward, uh, holding the string, and then tension the string. Uh, some other machines will just start to slide back and grab the string at the same time, but uh, this one does it in two steps. So you'll take a look at this. So if you saw that there, it, it went forward, it grabbed it and pulled it back. The other thing is uh, this nose or this uh, uh, front part of the traction head has a nice uh, opening and uh, I'll show you how uh, that's helpful when you're stringing an O3 port racket. Earlier I mentioned in this video that I wanted to get a machine that would have the ability to lock the turntable whenever I tension a string. And this is especially true on an O3 port racket. So. Without the Diablo on this machine, what you have to do is place the string into the jaw grippers and then angle the racket so that the string is touching the side of the uh, O3 porthole. And then you would go ahead and um, apply tension. Now what's good about the, uh, the nose or the uh, front of this traction head is that you can see that it's flared out. So that does allow for the string to be grabbed by the jaw grippers but not be um, touching any part of the front of the traction head. So I thought that that feature was well thought out. All right, I wanted to show you a quick uh, calibration and I'm not gonna get into all the details, but basically how to mount the calibrator. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove one of the billiards and on the uh, other one, I have it all the way flush to the mounting tower. I'll take off the pad and I have a fishing scale that has a bracket on one side, a metal bracket. So what I'm going to do is um, attach that to the, um, uh, I got to set it to kilograms. So yeah, I'll attach it to this post here. It'll slide back and forth. So I just have to make sure it's centered. And this is just the calibrator that I use. So depending on the one that you might have, it might be mounted differently. But basically what you're going to do is I'm setting it at kilograms and you have to go into the uh, calibration uh, screen. But basically you're gonna make uh, two pulls. Oh, I need to lock the turntable. And then what I'm gonna do is make a pull at 10 kilograms. So I'll do that one pull. And then you're gonna check to make sure the calibration is correct. And if there's any adjustments, you just have to make it in the screen. Then you're gonna also do a second pull at 30 kilograms and do the same. And then you set the calibration that way. All right, check this out. I wanted to show you the color touchscreen and it has a feature where I can actually flip it so you can see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and 
uh, set that and so you can see what I see. So I'm going to come over to your side and we'll talk about this color touchscreen. All right, so let's take a closer look at this color touchscreen. And this is available on the Evolution Tour. The Evolution has a monochrome screen that's not laid out like this. And what I like about this, not only that it's color, but it's just laid out where you can see everything you need and you don't have to go through subscreens. So we'll start with this button on the, on the left here. And it's set on tennis right now, but you can switch it to badminton. Now what that does is that it actually sets the traction head to a setting where if it's on badminton, it's going to actually squeeze the string uh, a little bit more, or it's going to come in closer because of the fact that it's uh, accounting for a string that's one millimeter and thinner. If you set it to tennis, then the, uh, the draw grippers, um, don't go in as much, uh, meaning that there's less pressure on the string. Now, I thought it was interesting when I talked to John, uh, this traction speed is also different if you set it to tennis or badminton. So on tennis, there's uh, speeds from one to five, but if you go to badminton, the one through five is a totally different speed. So, uh, and it's slower. So uh, you have 10 speeds really um, in this uh, setup. <clears throat> This top button here is the not function. So I have it at uh, plus five right now. You can go all the way up to 11, I believe. Yeah, 11 is the max. Uh, this uh, auto brake, uh, you can put on no if you don't want to have it uh, lock your turntable on every single pull. I like it on auto. And this uh, pre stretch button, it can go all the way up to 25 and we talked about the traction speed. So those are some cool features on this screen. Now, you can actually set the audio notifications to diff have different sounds. So I thought maybe I should just show you that because um, that's pretty cool. So right now on each t uh, pull, I have it set on, you probably heard it when I was stringing, but it's, on that it's very soft but it's loud enough for me to hear what I'm doing uh, there's some pretty wild and pretty loud ones on here I'll just show you one of the ones that I thought uh, was kind of loud yeah so I don't know you would get tired of that after a while but uh, that, that was pretty cool now there is one more feature that um, I'm not sure if you ever use it but I'll show it to you is uh, you can actually play music on this machine. Now there is a USB uh, port uh, on the other side of the screen. I have it plugged in and let's just play something here. And this is my wife Heather singing. Yeah, so that's a nice feature. I don't know if I'll ever use it, but it's in there in case I do. All right, so that's a wrap on this Babolat Evolution Tour stringing machine review. But I did want to add that I really appreciated the customer service. I didn't mention on this video, but um, in a previous video, uh, when I was shipped this machine, the turntable was damaged during shipping. So I called Josh at uh, Babolat and I had a turntable delivered to me within four days. So that was impressive. And I also appreciated my conversation with John Lyons and being able to learn more about this machine. So I do look forward to a long relationship with my machine and with Babolat. Thanks for watching. Happy stringing. And let your strings play.